Cinderella. Chapter One. Once upon a time, there was a noble man. He had a sweet and beautiful wife. They had one little girl. Her name was Ella. They lived in a beautiful big house in the country. There were many, many rooms in the house. Ella had her own lovely room where she played. When the weather was fine, she played in the garden. It was very big and full of many interesting things. There was a lake and a lovely little summer house. There were roses and many fine fruit trees. Two big gates opened to the road. One day, Ella saw the king and queen go by in a grand carriage. The young prince was with them. He was very handsome and kind. He smiled at Ella and she waved to him. She wished he would stop and play with her. Ella had no brothers or sisters. Her mother played with her and told her stories, so she was not lonely. Ella's father spent most of his time in the library. He did not speak to her or to anyone else very often. He read all day in the library. Ella was a very happy little girl, but when she was twelve years old, her mother became ill. The best doctors came from far and near, but none of them could help her mother. Then one morning. She found her father in a chair. For a long time, he said nothing. Then he came to her and touched her hair. We are all alone now, Ella, he said. Ella knew then that her mother was dead. It was difficult to believe. She was so sad. She went to bed that night, but she could not sleep. She got up and went to the window. She stood there and looked into the garden. And then a strange thing happened. Ella thought she saw an old woman among the trees. The old woman wore a long black coat and a strange pointed hat. She held a long stick. She looked straight at Ella's window. Her face was old but very, very kind. Her smile was so beautiful. Then the clouds covered the moon. When Ella looked again, the old woman was not there. Chapter Two. The house changed greatly with no mother there. Ella's father stayed in his library more than ever. The maids did not do their work. Ella walked around the house. There was nobody to talk to and nothing to do. Even the garden changed. The gardener did not care for it now. Then a worse thing happened. One day, Ella's father told her she must go away to school. She did not like this at all. She begged to stay at home. All is for your own good, my dear," said her father. There is nobody to teach you here now. You will be happier with other little girls your age. So Ella went away. Ella stayed at school for two years. She did not see her home during all the time. Then one day her father came to take her home again. You were very lonely in the house without your mother, weren't you, Ella? Yes, indeed," answered Ella. She thought of her dear mother. She almost cried. But I will try not to be lonely now. I will try to do the things mother did. Certainly," said her father. "You are a very good little girl, but there is a change in the house now." "A change?" asked Ella. Yes, somebody lives with us now. I hope she will be like a mother to you. 
I have a new wife. She has two daughters who also live with us. Please try to like them. This news surprised Ella very much. For a while, she could not speak. A stranger in her mother's house. Ella wanted to cry. What are the girls' names? She said at last. One is called Charlotte, answered her father. The other is Euphronia. I like the name Charlotte, said Ella unhappily. Are they big girls or little girls? Well, they are not young girls at all. You cannot expect them to play ball or run in the garden with you. They do not smile much, but they are fine people. I am sure you will get along together well. Please tell me more, Father. Do you mean that they are women? asked Ella. Yes, her father answered in a sad voice. That's okay, she said. Some women are very nice if they can tell stories or play games. Can Charlotte and Euphronia play games? Well, said her father, Charlotte plays the piano, I think. Her mother says so. I have not heard her myself. And Euphronia sings. Her mother says that she is very good. I do not know myself. Oh, here we are at the house. You can meet your stepmother and your sisters. In just a few minutes. Chapter three. Half an hour later, Ella sat alone in the big drawing room, very unhappy. Her stepmother and her stepsisters were out visiting. She could not meet them yet, but she found many signs that they lived in the house. First. When she went to her own room, she found someone else's things in it. The room was very dirty too; skirts, blouses, and hats were on the floor. Ella looked at all this. Then she saw Belinda, the maid. "What happened to my room?" asked Ella. "It's not your room now, Ella," answered Belinda. Miss Euphronia liked it so much that she made it hers. She put your things in the attic. I will tell father," said Ella. "I know he'll not like this." "I'm afraid you cannot be sure of that, Miss," said Belinda. "There are changes in your father too. He's not the head of his house now. Your stepmother always nags at him." He can only have peace and quiet in his library. Even then, your stepmother always disturbs him. I take his meals to him. He cannot bear to eat with her and Miss Charlotte and Miss Euphronia. They are the most unpleasant women I ever saw. I don't think your father can help you. You must accept these changes. Very sadly, Ella went to the dark attic. It was so small. What a change from the pretty room she had before. Ella cried for a moment, but she soon stopped. She took her prettiest dress and put it on. She wanted to look her best. She went down to wait for her stepmother and stepsisters. Soon. She heard the carriage outside. Then she heard an unpleasant voice. I wonder if the Baron's little brat is home now. That is my stepmother, Ella thought, and I am the Baron's little brat. I wish I was at school. In a moment, her stepmother and stepsisters came in. Ella had never seen three more unfriendly people before. Her stepmother came first. She walked in proudly. She was short and fat. 
she had a fat face and mean eyes. Between them was her big nose. She wore many shiny rings on her fingers. Ella noticed that one was her mother's. This made Ella angry. Her stepmother wore a black and yellow dress. She looked like an angry bee. Ella stood and bowed when her father introduced her. The woman looked at her from head to foot. So this is the girl," she said in a rough voice. "How did you miss? I heard what a good little girl you think you are, and I heard that your mother and father spoils you. Well, I want you to understand that it will end now. You have been to school, I believe." "Yes," answered Ella in a weak voice. "Who told you to put on that dress?" Nobody," said Ella. Her face was red with shame. My father gave it to me. It is my favorite dress. Oh, indeed. Well, go take it off now and put on the plainest one you have. I don't like little girls who try to look pretty. Why didn't you say hello to your sisters? Poor little Ella had not had time to say anything to them. Yet she tried to smile and appear friendly. How do you do? She said. Father told me about you. I think you have very pretty names. Do you believe that? Said one of the girls. She even came home in one of our coaches. She thinks she is too good to talk. The one who spoke had red hair. She wore lots of rouge and powder on her face. But even with all her paint, she was not beautiful at all. She had little eyes and her mother's big nose. It made her look like a horse, but no horse could look so mean and unhappy. Charlotte was not very pretty either. But she looked much better than Euphronia. However, she had a little red nose. It looked very funny. Yet Ella thought there was some kindness in her face. I am sorry that I come home in the carriage, she said. But father came to school for me. Please do not be angry. I will try to please you in the future. Her father had a look of worry on his face. We must not fight about this little thing. Ella really did nothing wrong. You be quiet! Shouted his wife. And understand that I will not spoil the bread. But my dear, the Baron said. Don't talk to me! She shouted. I am the lady of this house. Euphronia. Take this bad girl up to the garret. Keep her there until she sees how bad she is. A few days there with only bread and water will be good for her. Come along, you proud little thing," said Euphronia. "You must know your right place." So she pulled Ella away. Ella looked at her father. Her eyes begged him for help. But he looked at his feet. He did not try to help her. The last thing Ella heard was her stepmother shouting at her father. She sounded like an angry lion. Chapter Four. Poor little Ella sat in the dark garret. She stayed there for twenty-four hours. She had only bread and water. There was only one old mattress in the room. She lay down on this. She put her head in her hands and cried. She thought her heart would break. Her father did nothing to help her. This hurt her more than anything else. She wanted to run away to the town, and become a maid. But the little window of her room was locked. 
she had to stay where she was. Soon, it grew dark. Then, the loneliness was terrible. Ella shut her eyes and thought about the happy days when her mother was alive. At last, she fell asleep. In her dreams, she saw her mother. She looked down on Ella with kind and loving eyes. Ephronia came the next day to let Ella out. She opened the door and smiled a hateful smile. Well, miss, she said, how did you like your bedroom? Was it comfortable? Why are you so mean to me? asked Ella. I have done nothing wrong to you. If you do not like me, I'll go to school again and stay there. Ephronia laughed. I'm sure you would like that. But there will be no more school for you. Your father spent too much money on you already. We'll spend no more. You must make yourself useful now. And she hit poor little Ella on the face. Then Ephronia took her to the kitchen. She made Ella eat with the maids. She told Ella that she must sleep in the garret from now on. When her sister went away, Ella cried. Oh, Belinda, I'm the most unhappy girl in all the world. What shall I do? You must be strong, miss. I am sorry, but I will leave in a few days. All the housemaids must go. Your stepmother wants to save money. I am sure she wants it for herself and her ugly daughters. Ella was very sad to know that she would lose her only friend. One by one, the maids left. There was nobody else in the kitchen now but Ella and a little kitchen maid. Little by little, Ella accepted her new way of life. She did more and more work. She got up early every morning. She went downstairs and lit the fires. Then she washed the dishes from the night before. Next, she made a pot of tea to take to her stepsisters. They always lay in bed until 10 or 11 o'clock every morning. After she finished her small breakfast, Ella began the day's work. She cleaned the stairs, the bedrooms, and the drawing room. Ella polished the wood flowers, shiny on her hands and knees. It was very hard work. Her delicate little hands were once soft and white. Now they were rough and hard. She was busy from morning till night. She only rested at meals. Only in the evening after dinner could she be alone. She sat by the fireplace near the cinders. She thought of her hard life and the happy days of the past. After six months, the little kitchen maid left. Then the sisters let Ella go to the drawing room on some evenings. I hope you understand how lucky you are to visit us, Ephronia said one evening. But aren't you happier in the kitchen near the cinders? Yes said Ella quietly. For some reason, Ella's answer made Euphronia very angry. The next night, she said to Ella, I have found a new name for you. I recall you Cinderella because you sit near the cinders. There will be your name from now on. And it was Cinderella from that time forward. Chapter 5 Things went this way for more than two years. All the time, Cinderella hardly spoke to her father. Certainly, he knew the life his little daughter led. But he was really so afraid of his new wife that he did not say a word. He stayed in his library more and more. 
Cinderella's stepsister said that he was writing a book. Cinderella was now sixteen years old. Even though she had a hard life, she was a very beautiful girl. Her pretty clothes were now too old or too small. She had to wear her sister's old clothes. However, she never received anything until it was in rags. Still, she looked much more beautiful than the sisters, even in rags. And now, we come to the turning point of Cinderella's life. You remember the handsome young prince whom Ella saw long, long ago. He was now twenty-one years old. The king and queen gave a big festival for him. Cinderella heard all about it from her sisters. They talked of nothing else for many weeks. There will be lights all through the town," said Charlotte. "The fountains will run with wine. Every little boy and girl will receive a present. That is the prince's wish. He loves children. Every night there will be a grand ball at the palace." The king and queen will invite the best people in the country. We will receive an invitation, of course. We are very important people. And she was right. One afternoon, a man from the palace delivered the invitation. It was in a large envelope with a royal stamp on it. There was such excitement in the house. The sisters spent the whole day talking about what to wear and looking in the mirror. They took out all their dresses. They called Cinderella to look at them and give her advice. I think I will wear my red velvet evening dress with lace," said Euphronia. "It is so grand and it looks very pretty with my red hair." I will wear my purple evening dress and gold coat," said Charlotte. "Purple is the royal color. It will be perfect for a royal ball." Then they put the dresses on and walked around the room. They stood in front of the mirror and practiced the bows and smiles. All day, boys delivered packages from the shops in town. They brought new shawls, fancy shoes, perfume, handkerchiefs, fans, and gloves. You would think that fifty people in the house were going to the ball, and there were only two. Cinderella was busy from morning till night helping them. When the great day arrived, Cinderella went upstairs to help the sisters dress. The ball did not begin until seven o'clock in the evening, but they began to prepare after breakfast. They even got up at eight o'clock. Euphronia sat in front of the mirror, fixing her hair. She was dressed in her red velvet dress with green stockings and gold shoes. She looked like a big, colorful bird. Charlotte busily tied her corset. She wanted to make her waist much, much smaller. "Come here, you lazy thing!" shouted Euphronia when Cinderella entered. "Come help me with my hair. Would you like me to fix it for you?" asked Cinderella. "I'm sure I could do it." "No, no!" shouted Charlotte. I want Cinderella to tie my corset. And so they began to fight. Cinderella promised to help both of them. First, she tied Charlotte's corset. Then she fixed Euphronia's hair. It soon looked very pretty. That's very beautiful, Euphronia said. Red hair is quite the fashion this year. I'm sure that I will be very popular at the ball. Don't you wish that you could go with us, Cinderella? 
Why do you make fun of me? said Cinderella sadly. You know very well that such things are not for me. You are right, laughed Euphronia. Just think of a cinder girl at the prince ball. How everybody would laugh. Cinderella wanted to pull her hair, but she said nothing. They said that the prince will choose a bride from the ladies at the ball. Oh, sister, suppose it is me. That's impossible, laughed Euphronia. The prince would just as well choose Cinderella here. Besides, he has dark hair and eyes. Everybody knows that dark men like blonde women. Soon, they fought again. But at last, everything was ready. The carriage came to the door, and they drove away. Poor Cinderella looked sadly out of the window. Chapter 6 Cinderella watched the carriage until it disappeared. Then she went to the kitchen and sat in the corner of the fireplace. She felt so sad. She was very strong, but she thought of her stepsister's good luck and her unhappy life. She cried. Now her sisters were in the great hall of the palace. They talked with the beautiful, happy people. They danced under the bright lights. She sat there in the dark, ugly kitchen. She had no one to talk to. She was so sad. Her tears fell to the floor. Suddenly, Cinderella heard a noise. Then she saw an old woman in the dark corner of the fireplace. Who are you? asked Cinderella with a shaky voice. Don't be afraid, said the woman. I have not come to hurt you. You saw me before when you were even more unhappy than now. Look at me. Do you remember me? Then the strange old woman stepped into the light. She was very, very old. She wore a red skirt and a black blouse. She wore a strange pointed hat on her head. She held a long stick. Cinderella looked at her. She wondered where she had seen her before. And then the woman smiled. Her face became as bright as a spring morning. Her eyes shone deep and true. I know, I know, said Cinderella. You are the woman who was in the garden the night my mother died. I wanted to come to you, but you disappeared. Because it was not the right time, said the woman. You saw me only once, but I have seen you many times. Every day I watched you work. I know all the bad things. Your stepmother and stepsisters did to you. I was very near when you sat here among the cinders. I watched over you when you lay down to sleep. Then, who are you? said Cinderella. I am your godmother, answered the old woman. Your mother and I were friends when she was a girl. Before she died, I promised her to take care of you. Tell me, what is the matter? Why are you crying? It was nothing, said Cinderella. I wanted, I wanted. You wanted to go to the ball, isn't that it? Yes, Cinderella quietly. Well, if you are a good girl and do what I tell you, You may go, but don't ask any questions. Do you have pumpkins in the garden? Why, yes, said Cinderella with a surprise. 
Then go now and bring me the biggest one you can find. Now, don't ask why. Just do as I say. You'll understand soon enough. Cinderella ran into the garden at once. She soon returned with a fine pumpkin. She wondered how such a thing would help her go to the ball. Now, a knife, please. Cinderella brought a knife. Her godmother cut off the top of the pumpkin. Then she took out all the meat. It was now completely empty. Then she took the pumpkin outside and touched it with her stick. Immediately, it changed into a most magnificent coach. The top was glass and the bottom was gold. Now Cinderella understood that her godmother was a fairy. There was not a more surprised and happy girl in the whole country that night. She looked in the coach. The seat was made of rose-colored silk. Cinderella was so excited. Hurry, said the old woman. The ball will end before you get there. I want a mouse or two. Run and see if there are any in the trap. Cinderella hurried to the kitchen and found the six live mice in the trap. What good luck! Open the trap a little," said the old woman, "and let them run out one by one." Then she touched each one with her stick. They immediately changed into fine horses. They were beautiful, and they quickly walked to the coach. Now, we want a coachman," said the old woman. "A red would make a good coachman. Go see if there is one in the red trap." Once again, Cinderella had great luck. There was a nice fat red in the trap. The old woman touched it with her stick. Slowly, he became taller and taller. He changed into the finest coachman that ever was. Now you must have some footmen, the godmother said. Go into the garden again and look behind the big water pot. You will find the six lizards there. Catch them and bring them to me. The lizards were there, just as the old woman said. They were fine and fat. Very soon, they became six footmen. They were all dressed in gray and gold. They jumped up behind the coach, just as footmen should. So that is finished," said the fairy godmother with a smile. "No lady at the prince ball will arrive in a finer coach than you. Aren't you pleased?" "Yes," answered Cinderella. But will I go in these old clothes? Oh, I forgot all about the dress," said the old woman. But that is easy. She touched the Cinderella lightly on the shoulder with her stick. Immediately, her dirty dress changed into a beautiful white silk dress. It had butterflies and delicate blue flowers, and little pearls on it. Around her neck was a necklace of pearls and diamonds, and on her little feet was a pair of glass shoes. They were the prettiest shoes you ever saw. Now you are all ready," said the kind godmother. "But before you go, listen carefully to me. You may dance and enjoy yourself all you like until midnight." But just at twelve, you must leave the ball and come home. You cannot stay even one minute longer. If you do, your coach will become a pumpkin, and your horses will become mice. Your coachman will change into rat, and your footman will change into lizards, and your pretty dress will change back again into your old dress. That will not be nice for you," 
So remember my words. Cinderella promised her godmother that she would not forget. She stepped into her coach and drove away. She was full of joy. Chapter Seven. The grand coach drove away. The six gray horses stepped proudly. The coachman sat on the box, and the six footmen held on behind. They called out, "Make way! Make way!" They went through the town. All the people were surprised and excited. They shouted as Cinderella went by. They thought that she was a princess. The doorman at the palace thought the same. They came and asked the name of the guest, but Cinderella told her footman to to say her name was a secret. The doorman did not know what to do, so they told the young prince. He thought this was very strange. He went outside to see his guest with a secret name. The moment he saw Cinderella, his heart stopped. He forgot everything else. He took her into the ballroom himself. And what a sight Cinderella saw! It was even more wonderful than her dreams. The great hall was lighted with beautiful glass chandeliers. The room was so big, Cinderella could hardly see the end of that. The flowers shone like a mirror. The guests danced, and the orchestra played. The entrance of Cinderella and the prince caused great excitement. Everybody stopped dancing and looked at her. The king and queen had never seen anyone so lovely. Please tell me your name, sweet lady," asked the prince. But Cinderella told him she could not. So the prince did not ask her again. He was sure she was a princess. She was so lovely and kind. In a moment, the music began again. The prince bowed to her and asked her to dance. No lady in the hall danced more beautifully than she did. Her little feet moved lightly in a glass slippers. It was a joy to see her. All the guests talked about her. No one knew anything about the strange, beautiful guest. Oh, how lovely she is! Said one. Who can she be? She must be a princess from another country. Others talked about her dress. Who is her dressmaker? I never saw a more lovely style. I must have one just like it. Cinderella soon saw her stepsisters by the wall. It seemed that nobody wanted to dance with such ugly ladies. Dance followed dance. The prince never laughed at Cinderella. He had eyes for no one else. Later, they had a wonderful supper in the banquet hall. It was a grand meal. Cinderella never saw anything like it in her life. The table was full of the most exotic foods. There were great pieces of beef and pork, cakes and pies, and great full of delicious fruits. Cinderella sat between her sisters. They had no idea who she was. They had only seen her dressed in rags. Cinderella tried very hard to be friendly to them. They were very proud of her kindness. After the banquet, the dancing began again. The prince danced only with Cinderella. She was so happy. The hours passed like minutes. Before she knew it. The night flew by. Suddenly, she heard the big clock in the tower. It sounded out forty-five minutes past eleven. She remembered her godmother's word. She stood up immediately. 
She made a deep bow and said good night. The prince wanted her to stay, but she would not. She ran down the stairs and jumped into the coach. The horses ran like the wind. Just as Cinderella reached home, the clock sounded twelve. Immediately, the coach disappeared. Only the empty pumpkin lay on the grass. The coachman became a red again. The horses became mice, and the footmen lizards. They all ran away. Cinderella stood at the kitchen door and wrapped the dress again. Chapter Eight. Cinderella went into the kitchen where her godmother waited. There you are. I was just worrying about you," said the old woman. "Did you enjoy the ball?" "Oh, godmother," said Cinderella. "It was lovely. I wanted to stay there forever. The prince was so kind to me. I felt like the greatest lady in the world." There will be another ball tomorrow night. The prince invited me. I wish I could go. Her eyes sparkled. Well, we'll see," said her godmother. Just then, a loud knock came at the door. The stepsisters returned. The old woman disappeared. Cinderella ran to open the door. How late you are! You must be tired. I suppose it was very wonderful," said Cinderella softly. "Yes, indeed," said Charlotte. "The most beautiful princess came to the ball. She was so nice to us. She sat with us at supper, and gave us cakes and fruits." "Tell me about her," said Cinderella happily. "What was her name? How was she dressed?" That is the strange part of it," says Charlotte. "Nobody knew who she was or where she was from. But certainly she was a princess. The prince thought it was strange. After she left, he said that he would give all his money to know her name. Her dress was just beautiful. The clothes was very expensive, and the design was unique." Oh my," said Cinderella. "I wish that I could see her. Won't you let me go with you tomorrow night?" "What?" shouted Euphronia. "The princess would never speak to us again if we took you." Cinderella said nothing, but she laughed to herself. The next day was also very exciting. The sisters had to dress for the second ball. Both of them wanted to change their dresses to look like the princess dress. Cinderella knew very well what the style was, but nothing she did pleased them. She was very glad when they left. It was almost seven. Her godmother still did not come. Cinderella watched the clock. She was afraid the old woman would not come. Then she heard someone behind her. "Aha!" said the old woman with a smile. "You are afraid I would not come. Do you have the pumpkin and the other things?" "Yes, yes. Here they are," said Cinderella. "Oh, godmother, you are so good to me." The old woman made the wonderful coach and horses. The coachman and the footman appear again. Cinderella jumped with joy. Last, the godmother touched Cinderella on the shoulder. The second dress was even more beautiful than the one she wore the night before. It was made of light yellow silk. The glass shoes on her feet had a delicate gold design. Once again, the old woman told her to return before twelve o'clock. At the time, all her beautiful things would change back again. Cinderella promised to return before midnight. Then she drove away. The prince met her at the palace gate. 
he was afraid that she would not come. As before, he took her into the ballroom. He never left her side all evening. He whispered a thousand lovely words to her. You are the lady of my heart. Why won't you even tell me your name? Cinderella was silent, but she wondered what the prince would say if he saw her in her dark kitchen. The time passed very pleasantly. Cinderella quite forgot her godmother's words. Suddenly, the big clock in the tower began to ring midnight. She jumped up. She did not even say goodbye. She ran out of the ballroom and to the palace garden. She ran so fast that one of her glass slippers came off. But she did not even notice it. Four, five, six, rang the clock. Cinderella ran faster than ever before. Seven, eight, nine. She found a way that went to the palace gates. Ten, eleven, twelve, and on the sound of twelve, her beautiful dress changed into the ragged clothes of a kitchen maid. She removed the one glass slipper and carefully hid it in her pocket. Cinderella ran all the way home. She arrived just in time to open the door for the sisters. She asked them if they had fun. And if the beautiful princess was there again, they told her all about it. And what do you think? said Charlotte. What do you think? The prince kept that slipper in his hand the rest of the evening. I even saw him kiss it. It is certain that the prince loves that beautiful lady. He will never be happy until he finds her again. At these words, tears filled Cinderella's eyes. She turned her face from her sisters. It is the princess he loves, she thought sadly. If he saw me now in these erect clothes, would he know me? He would be so sad and angry to know he danced with a kitchen maid. And then she thought that it was good this way. The prince would never see her again. Perhaps he would forget her some day. But Cinderella would never forget. She would have the memory of those two happy evenings all her life. They would stay with her like a beautiful dream. Chapter Nine. Charlotte was right. The prince was with Cinderella only two evenings, but he already loved her very dearly. He loved her for her beauty, and for her kind ways. He was sure she had some problem. That was why she ran away from the ball so suddenly. He decided to find her. He wanted to help her. First of all. He ordered every lady at the palace to try on the slipper, which Cinderella left behind. Every lady came. First came all the princesses, then came the duchesses, then the countesses. Last came the maids in the kitchen, but the slipper would not go on the foot of any of them. After that. The prince ordered every lady in the town, and in the country, to try on the glass slipper. When he found the lady who could wear it, he would marry her. Every one was very excited. The prince officers took the slipper into the town. Then all the ladies came. Every one of them tried very hard to put the slipper on. Many of them had very small, pretty feet, but for some strange reason, the slipper always seemed a little too small. That is because it was a magic slipper. 
So the prince officers went to the country houses. Cinderella's stepsisters heard the news. They were so excited. Do you hear Euphronia? said Charlotte. The prince said that he would marry the lady who can wield the slipper. I am certain that it is just my size. Oh no! answered Euphronia. I am sure it will fit me. Soon they heard the trumpet outside. Then a loud knock came to the door. Cinderella opened it, and took the officers into the drawing room. The sisters already waited there. Then she went into the kitchen again. No one asked her to stay. The officers tried the slipper on Charlotte's food. She tried again and again, but it just would not go on her foot. I told you so," said Euphronia. "Now I will try." She also tried and tried, but her foot was too big. It made her very angry. "I'm very sorry, ma'am," said the officer. "The slipper will not fit either of you. Are there any other ladies in the house?" "No, there are not," Euphronia answered angrily. I think you made a mistake, ma'am," answered the officer politely. "A young girl opened the door for us. Who was she?" "What? Do you mean Cinderella?" shouted Euphronia. "She is our kitchen maid. She does all our dirty work." "No matter," answered the officer. The prince ordered every lady to try. "This is really silly." Euphronia shouted angrily, but the officer then walked into the kitchen. Cinderella stood up in surprise. Even in her ragged work dress, she looked so lovely. The officer opened his eyes wide. "Will you please try this slipper, ma'am?" he asked. On the very first try, the slipper easily went on Cinderella's. Pretty little foot. How the sisters were surprised! Euphronia's angry face turned almost green. Charlotte could not believe it. Then Cinderella quietly took the other shoe from her pocket. She put it on the other foot. Her feet shone like light. Well, said Euphronia. You tricked us. Then, suddenly, the godmother appeared. She lifted her stick. She touched the girl lightly on the shoulder. Cinderella's rags changed into a beautiful white silk dress. It was the same one she first wore to the ball. She looked so lovely. The officer kissed her hand. Then. The old godmother spoke. Her voice was very hard. "You are proud and unkind girls," she said. "Look at your sister. You have hated her and used her. She is the daughter of the house. Yet you took away all her joy. Now she will be the greatest lady in the country. You must beg her to forgive you." And. They did. The stepsisters cried and begged Cinderella to forgive them, but Cinderella had a kind heart. She kissed them. She even kissed her stepmother, who came into the room. Then the fairy godmother said that the carriage was ready for her. They all went into the garden. The beautiful gold coach with its six gray horses was there. The coachman and footman waited. So Cinderella drove away. The prince was the happiest man in the world. He knew that she would not go away again. Cinderella was happy too. She loved him and wished to be his wife. A week later, 
They were married. It was a great occasion. The parties lasted a whole week. All the town had a holiday. Euphronia and Charlotte were at the wedding. They never said one bad word about Cinderella. They were really sorry for the bad things they did before. Cinderella gave them big apartments in the palace. Soon, they married two gentlemen of the court. And Cinderella and the prince lived. Very happily together, all their lives.